Well, I thought I would just quickly um, kind of go back over again the baggage door. You can see I've got it done. So I shrank the uh, fabric to 250 everywhere. Once I got it at 250, I came back with the MEK and I activated this small amount of glue. I didn't put as much uh, on there as a lot of people. It's not an inch. It's just a small amount around the carbon fiber part of the baggage door here. Uh, I MEK'd it with, with MEK. I actually pushed in a little bit on the fabric right here. So it kept helped pull in a couple places, helped kind of push it down, you know, and I just actually held it. Uh, until it dried enough where I could come off and it stayed black. You just need it to hold it enough to where it's not, you know, pulling away while you cut it and come back and glue it. All right, so a couple of things is that when you go in here, then you'll see you'll have to cut these radiuses all the way in to, this is the dip where the uh, door, you know, will set in to the recessed area here. These are a quarter turn receptacles that are here. In these areas, you'll have to, if you don't, it will not lay down in this receptacle. It will want to pop up. So go ahead and cut it all the way up, you know, to the receptacle in several areas because you want to make sure this lays down. Now, the next thing I do is take a relatively cool iron. I mean, maybe 200 degrees, two and a quarter, something like that. And I just go, uh, here it is here. I just take it and I just go in that indenture and I just crease it. I go fast. I'm not wanting to shrink it. If you don't want to shrink the fabric here, I'm just kind of wanting to put a little crease, you know, all the way around this thing where that channel is. That channel, that recessed area is, is at the, both sides and the top. The bottom is, and it just goes straight over the bottom where your hinge is going to sit and your door hinge is going to be here. So you can take that iron and just get you a little crease, you know, going around that, ed, right down around that edge and get it right, make your cuts so you know it's gonna lay down uh, good in there. Once you uh, have done that, then obviously you're gonna glue in this recessed area. And then, you know, one thing that works good, I don't have, have it with me, but if you're using the chip brushes, say this was a chip brush, use the wooden handle, the chip brush, and it's great, or, or this clothespin will work good. Just as, you're, as you've glued it, glue a small section and make sure, see, you're pushing it down and making it stay down in that recessed area. So make sure it does. If it's not, if it's a curved area and it's not, if it just keeps wanting to pop up, then go back in here and cut, you know, another piece, cut it all the way up back up into here. We're going to cover these areas that we've spliced. The same thing when you go here, you've got to cut these radiuses. You can see here, I cut one, two, three pieces out of this. So I three had a cut here, a cut here, cut here and a cut here okay uh, so it would so it would stay you know recessed and it would go around this uh, radius same thing here you can see the cuts i had to make cut 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 to be sure that this stayed recessed while it glued down okay so glue that part and then let it get nice and set up then take your iron like i said before take your iron and now Remember, you don't want to shrink anything in here. If you start trying to shrink this, if you've got it glued, it's really hard. It won't shrink anyway. But if you go in here and try and put it back in this channel with a hot iron and you shrink this fabric, then what you're going to do is pull it away from that recessed area. So stay away from this, this recessed area here with your iron, especially if it's very hot. Okay, so then, so then the next thing we're going to do after we got the recessed area, obviously, is we're going to go around go around this way. So just take this iron and just quickly, you know, with it at say 250 or something or 300, lay the fabric over and just go along the edge and crease it so it makes that bend. That makes it so much nicer. Across here, it's gonna go all the way in and there. Then go back and obviously then go ahead and glue around the bend just to the back side. So now your fabric will be sitting, you know, uh, going back, facing straight back into the uh, baggage area like that. Okay, then once you've got that iron where it's laying over, then just pull it up, go ahead and put glue on the uh, carbon fiber flat area, lay the fabric over and get it down good. Here, once you've done that, then the last thing of course is we're gonna have to go back up here and tuck it back on the inside, wrap it around this piece on the inside, just like we did kind of with the windows where we went down the channel and then over here in those channels. So once again, once this is dry, take your iron, put it this way, like this, 
across here and iron all the fabric all the way around to where it's pointing back up towards the outside of the baggage area, okay? Then what we're gonna do is pull it down and then I take my gloved hand and once I, and then, then of course measure the fabric. So you got the fabric, you know, where it's gonna tuck, tuck back in and cut it and trim it and then bring it back down and then put glue just on the fabric, okay? Just do a small section. I just do like here to here, here to start with. Do the same thing. Tuck it on the back side, smooth it out. I then take my little tool here because you can't see very good up in there. So take that little tool and once again, just kind of push it down in there and get it laid down smooth so you know it's smooth. You can kind of feel with your fingers. And then immediately I found that these clothespins work great. I don't want to stand here and keep smoothing and keep watching it like I did with the window frames. I can't get paper clips in there. I mean, clothesline clips, if I could, I would do it. Hey, maybe paper clips will work. <laughs> Just thought of something new. Paper clips would fit down in there and you could put a bunch of paper clips in those big ones maybe and slide them. New idea. Uh, but anyway, yeah, just do this. So as you do a little section, roll it back in there, push it, make sure it's flat, and then just take these clothespins and then I'll just let these sit up, you know, for a, an hour or something and come back and take it off later, okay? And when I put a clothespin on, what I'm kind of do, because I can't see again back in here without getting my head in there or going back to the other side. So I take a clothespin, I, I let it grab it right here at the edge, and then I push it with the tension on it, and then I push it and slide it in. That way on the back side where that fabric is, it'll grab the fabric and put tension on it and then pull it down and keep it, you know, pretty tight. Then like I say, you can walk back over to the other side, you know, and kind of look back up in here or get you a mirror, you know, and look back up and see how you're looking around the inside uh, like that. Okay, when we get ready to do the patch, there's a patch that goes across out here too. And it's pretty much the same, except it's gonna extend out uh, further like this and go around and go up and up to here. So it's gonna work the same way when we do that patch. And I talk about being very careful. This is an area you really see on the airplane. And you, and you, you can see here how I did this while I was showing you how, you know, this is the extended back, but see the fabric is not touching it right there. Okay, it's just barely off of it. So you're not gonna ever see that once we're done. You know, it's gonna come here, come across here, and uh, it won't be, well, it's not sticking out. You'd see it sticking out if it was. We blended, you can see where the Bondo has gone up and blended. You can see where the Bondo was there, but we had our ruler on there and made sure it was straight and flat. So I can't feel it, it's right there at that edge. It's away from it, I can push it in. So that's not gonna show at all. There's no hump there. Same thing on these areas here. You can see all along the side of that where we put the Bondo in there and then taped it back off there. All that you see through there, you're not gonna touch because you can see the fabric is still pushing in. It's touching here and going on down to the stringer here, then going up to that piece there. So this stayed down far enough out of the way, you're not gonna see that through the fabric. It'll be a nice joint right here. When you put the patch on and you're putting the poly brush and stuff on, the poly brush, when you're putting on a, a patch, for example, or a tape, you've got a lot of coats of poly brush in there, a lot more than you're gonna have. You're only gonna have two coats on the regular fabric here but around the patch area or a taped area, you're gonna have more poly brush because you're putting down two coats first, then you're putting the tape down with a coat, and then you're putting another coat over that, and then coming back with your two regular coats. Anywhere you've got a lot of that poly brush where it's really filled in and it gets shiny when you put it on, that means it's really slick. It's filled in it's completely and sitting on top and it makes it really slick. And when you spray your top coat color, we have your poly spray, then you have the top coat color. It will tend to shine more. It will be a little more glossy and shinier because that paint is not filling in. It's really sitting on top and slick. So you're going to see the difference. Nothing you can do about that. But what you will see is if you slop poly brush around the outside edges of that tape, it's fine to see the edge of a tape and see the teeth marks from the scissor cuts that are around there. That's part of being a cub. Same thing on all the other tapes. But I think what looks bad is whenever you put so much poly brush on it and then you get some out here and some over there and it's an erratic line that that looks bad. So what I'm saying is be very careful with the poly brush, go right over to the patch area. And then like I talk about in previous videos, when I was talking about using poly brush and so forth, 
is then I, I take some MEK and I actually take some MEK on a rag and go to the edges, outside edges, where the teeth are of the patches and the fabrics. And I make sure I wipe them down enough to where they're not shining anymore. It's a nice straight line, okay? So then it looks nice when you look at it, you see a nice detailed straight uh, line around it. When we put this patch on, obviously we've made all these cuts in here, so we still have some bare carbon fiber, as you see. So all you do is when you put the patch on here, you're gonna have to do it exactly the same. It's a solid piece that's gonna come across. You're gonna have to put it up there, then you're gonna uh, poly brush it on. And then you're gonna, when it gets dry, you're gonna cut it and come back in here and do the exact same thing as you did with this, except that the patch is gonna be coming over here. So when you make your cuts here, just move over a hair. You know, in other words, when you made this cut right here, so we've got this over here, make the cut at a different angle, you know, maybe over here like this. And that way when you fold, the fabric over from the patch you'll cover these spots so that way these areas that were not covered before will be covered with fabric uh, by doing the uh, fat of the patch same thing here you know just move these cuts over a little bit so that the next cuts on the fabric are like maybe here and here and here and then that when you fold it over it'll give you a patch coverage uh, fabric coverage over there so that's pretty much it you can see pretty cool I'll just this is a 250 shrink I'm going to give that a little time to set up, maybe have some lunch, and then I'm going to come back and I'll do a 350 uh, shrink on it. But you can see how nice everything came out. All the all the little uh, wrinkles that were back here, you can see they're all, they're all gone. This is just with the 250 shrink. Hear that? It's tight, and that's just 250. Like I say, that's, that iron brings it to a tension, I think, not to uh, uh, a pressure. This is, uh, you know, this is the front part. See how that all came out? Here, your uh, D windows are gonna come to here, and then oh, here will actually be an overlap from your front window. Your front window will come down and overlap, and it will actually cover this area. But we just wanted to make sure we had covered that hole, like we talked about, and you see, can see it is covered in there. So the D window will come up, actually come across the front of this post, the plastic does, and you'll secure it to this post with some stick on uh, uh, tape to there. And then the front window will overlap it and come back down here. It'll come down and come around like this and overlap the door down here. So this is how this all came out. You can see there, see how the fabric spacer all is. This is, this is tight, so I got good tension here, so I'm gonna have a good grip here when I go to do my 350 uh, tension. Turn this around. You can kind of see here, all I did, I just shrunk this up too. All I care about, I don't care, it's not, it's not pretty, who cares? Probably end up taking most of this off anyway. But you can see here, it's tight right here. That means I've got something holding you know, when we go to do all this 350 shrink and everything over here. I've got something that's helping hold it besides just this joint along here. And everything here, remember how wrinkly it was up here? This is just the 250. It'll get a lot tighter when we do the 350. So anyhow, that's it. I probably won't come back until I get ready to do the uh, uh, patches and grommets and tapes.